Weiter geht es jetzt mit einem Gast, den wir vor einigen Tagen hier im Studio interviewt haben. Er heißt Andrei Maimulakin und war vor zwei Wochen auf einer Speakers-Tour durch Deutschland. Und er ist auch hier in Freiburg aufgetreten. Andrei kommt aus der Ukraine. Und dort sind sexuelle Beziehungen zwischen gleichgeschlechtlichen erwachsenen Personen seit 1991 nicht mehr strafbar. Und trotzdem sind ukrainische LGTBI nach wie vor beträchtlichen Vorurteilen und auch Diskriminierung ausgesetzt, also zum Beispiel auch im Arbeitsleben. Aber auch sonst gehören Erpressung und andere Übergriffe einfach zu ihrem Alltag. Andrei ist Mitbegründer und Koordinator von der ukrainischen Nichtregierungsorganisation Nashmir. Und Nashmir setzt sich für die Rechte von LGBT-Personen ein. Die Organisation hat ihren Sitz in Kiew und existiert seit 1998. Über die Entstehung der Gruppe, ihre Arbeit und die aktuelle Situation in der Ukraine erzählt uns aber jetzt Andrei persönlich. Das Interview gibt es leider nur auf Englisch, aber für alle, die mehr erfahren wollen, ihr könnt einfach mal auf queeramnesty.de nachschauen. Dort findet ihr mehr Infos. Hi, André. Thanks for being with us today. Uh, my first question would be, how does your organization work and how long have you been working for Nashmir? Uh, actually, we started our, our work as a grassroots group and it was 20 years ago. Uh, I think it was just the development of some personal uh, uh, motives. Uh, you see, at first you understand your sexual orientation, then you accept it. It's, uh, uh, of course, a long uh, uh, process. And then you do some uh, first steps on coming out. But next step for us, I mean, for our uh, groups of friends, was uh, we decided that it is necessary to do more uh, uh, open uh, and to, to change the life in Ukraine. So it was uh, mm -hmm. a development of our personal. Uh, uh. Yeah. So um, how is the situation for um, homosexual people in the Ukraine right now? What is the common people's attitude towards LGBT? Uh, okay, I think uh, it should be clear that uh, the land landmark uh, line was uh, this Euromaidan, or we call it the Revolution of Dignity in 2014. So before it, uh, our politicians uh, uh, spoke uh, very negatively about LGBT, and uh, they even used this LGBT topic uh, to um, promote uh, not European integration. And after uh, uh, this Euromaidan, uh, we see uh, some positive changes and actually r r some radical positive change uh, in our, uh, on our political level uh, in, and in the society. Mm -hmm. um, There are some uh, examples, good examples of uh, uh, improving legislation. Last year it was, uh, uh, for the first time, uh, they included sexual orientation and gender identity into anti-discrimination uh, law. And then uh, the most uh, uh, successful was uh, LGBT Pride, or it is called Equality March, in Kyiv this year. So it was uh, more than 1,500 participants. It was uh, uh, support from city administration and uh, uh, excellent work of police. So it protected uh, uh, this march and uh, uh, yeah, it, it was very successful. And I should say that uh, in this Equality March it was like 50% of LGBT and 50% of uh, non-LGBT straight people. So it shows that uh, also some changes in the society started. So this issue is uh, seen as uh, part of our European way. And uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, it is very good. Okay, so there already have been improvements. But um, apart from the legal situation, apart from the political situation, how do you think about the future? What do you think... Um, is there anything more that could be done um, in terms of uh, attitudes of society, for example? I think uh, as our uh, country finally stood on this uh, path of European integration and we are part of a uh, uh, global process in the world. So I think, uh, uh, yeah, soon, maybe not so soon, maybe in 10 years, uh, our uh, LGBT community and uh, in general these LGBT issues will be almost the same like uh, in other countries of Europe. Uh, and we shall uh, pass this uh, uh, process much faster probably than uh, you here in Germany uh, because, yeah, as I said, it is part of global uh, changes in the world to accept LGBT as, uh, uh, I should say, normal people. 
Yeah. And uh, uh, I also w- want to mention that next year it will be Eurovision uh, concert uh, competition in Kiev. Mm-hmm. And of course it is uh, more uh, like LGBT friendly, uh, yeah. gay friendly. So I think our authorities will do uh, their best uh, to uh, have this concert uh, uh, successful and uh, uh, also uh, support LGBT pride. Maybe it will uh, go together with this uh, uh, competition. Okay. And could you maybe just briefly explain what what you actually do at your organization right now? What are current projects? Mm-hmm. We are quite a small group uh, and uh, uh, our main focus uh, right now is uh, human rights for LGBT. So we collect and document information about uh, violations of uh, the rights, but we also have uh, like monitoring network. It's uh, LGBT activists across the country which uh, help us in this process of collecting document information. Uh, then of course we monitor changes in legislation and uh, why we do uh, this. It's uh, because uh, this is this such a kind of information is very important for advocacy work uh, to show the situation to authorities. Uh, uh, for example, now even uh, police asks us about uh, examples of uh, hate crimes. Uh, so they are interested in the topic. They start to be interested in the topic uh, uh, to analyze the situation and to uh, uh, react for such uh, hate crimes. And uh, uh, next is uh, uh, we uh, provide legal support for victims of uh, uh, hate crimes. So this is like complex work and together with other LGBT groups, uh, of course, we are very active in advocacy. So we need new legislation, uh, uh, good legislations about LGBT. For example, we are uh, advocating for uh, civil partnership uh, in Ukraine for uh, same-sex couples. It will not happen soon, probably, but uh, uh, still we need to start this work uh, already uh, yeah, because it is one of the important issues for us. Thank you very much for the interview. Thanks for being with us today. And <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to say a uh, uh, big uh, thanks uh, to Germany that you help uh, Ukraine in solving this uh, problem in the east of Ukraine. So, and in general, you are uh, our best part, uh, one of the best partners on European uh, level. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks. Good to hear that.